Welcome to today's web chat interview with the two guys from Visual Risk, Paul Nayland, the Managing Director, Gary Starling, the Head of Professional Services. And we're going to be talking about today's Treasury Management Systems Market. In particular, we're going to look first at the key features of the TMS market today. Paul, in the recent survey by AFP on TMS systems around the world, they found that 54% of them are installed systems, 33% are uh, SaaS-based systems, and then 13% are modules within ERP systems. Is that your experience? Is, is that critical difference? Yes, so it's quite interesting that the trend in treasury management systems and their developments have paralleled the proliferation of the internet and the advances in technology. From our side, we see a definite interest in our customer base to moving to hosted solutions. Um, that has been a big trend for us, both. Is that hosted uh, by you or hosted by them? We are an Azure um, partner. So we're a Microsoft Gold partner with Azure. So that's hosted on Azure servers, uh, wherever their data centers. They have 19 data centers around the world. So we're able to deploy uh, where our customers are on those Azure servers. Have people stopped worrying about the, these remote services? Is it just normal now? Yes, I mean, I think if, if you were going to worry about the internet, your whole business would probably crumble because don't worry about your treasury system. If you couldn't email or your internet went down, um, you'd be at a loss. And I think all the concerns about security, connectivity with the very widespread adoption of the internet have ameliorated all of those issues. So that means that you've got different solutions for different sizes of customers. As far as I can see, there are the segmentation is huge, the global multinationals, the MNCs, the smaller MNCs, about a billion turnover, and SMEs. Where do these solutions fit for the different segmentation? Gary, is there a a natural way of segmenting this, natural solution well, for each type of customer? Well, I mean, I, the trend is definitely um, towards the hosted solution. Um, what we have seen where the trend isn't, where, where, where people are looking to install locally is perhaps the, the smaller banks, where there is some sort of security issues. It's actually really the only, only place where we're actually seeing that sort of trends um, that, that, that way. Going forward. Yeah, I don't see much differentiation. So even even the ERP vendors are looking towards having, you know, hosted versions of their products. So the trend is it doesn't really matter the size of the company. There might be specifics like Gary, Gary has mentioned, but hosted is certainly the flavor of the day. It, it's interesting. We've got experience in Asia. Asia is a bit of a different market because privacy and security of data is much more important there and their their reticence to host is more significant than Europe or uh, American markets. If we move on then to the key differentiators, because when I talk to people, they say TMS supplies, they say, yes, of course we can do this. We can, of course we can do that. So what are the key differentiators and two, top two key differentiators between the systems, between the suppliers? What are the differentiators? So every system has strengths and weaknesses. You know, reflecting it from the, the eyes of the corporate treasurer, they're looking and they're actually echoing what the vendors are saying. And basically, they expect the basic functionality of cash management, of treasury management, uh, you know, the day-to-day -day operations to all be in the systems. And they'd be surprised if you don't have that. What they're looking for, and they've asked the same question that you're asking, what makes you different? So really you're seeing two or three different types of directions. You have some systems that are very analytic, very strong on complexity, able to handle derivatives, insights into risk. And then you have others which have really gone down the cash route. So they're less worried about you know, the problems and the difficult aspects of treasury it's much, much more about the simple volumes of handling all of that data from large distributed companies. Okay, that's the functions they're choosing, but 
what is a differentiator between a specialist cash management supplier and another specialist cash management supplier? What are the key things you need to look for? So I'd, I'd look at it from the visual risk point of view. And I suppose what differentiates us, it's a little bit easier to talk from our experience. Um, you know, people are looking for insight. Treasury has evolved. You had a period where the GFC really rocketed Treasury from number seven on the board's agenda to let's say number two. And Treasury became the focus of the day. And that focus has continued. There's in a sense a new order post the GFC. We went from crisis to really getting on top of treasury issues, management of liquidity, and people are now looking to prepare themselves for the future. And the future is a risky world. It's a volatile world. And so they're really trying to understand how their treasury system can help position themselves more in line with the strategic application of treasury and raising up the profile of treasury within the organization and how the treasury system is going to be a facilitator of that. And so that's a big trend that we see that people, as I said, expect the basic functionality to be there, but they're really looking for systems that can provide insight that once you've got things automated and working smoothly, are able to really propel you along a strategic direction that kind of lifts your whole profile and your reporting and ability to cope with risk throughout the enterprise. And that's where you've been positioned ever since you started Visual Risk. But one of the new aspects differentiated is, is speed of implementation and speed of updates. We're now having people like Bloomberg talking about two to three weeks to implement their new TRM system. How important is this? Well, I think it's horses for courses. So, you know, Bloomberg are not looking at a large scale you know, treasury system that's integrated throughout the enterprise because that would be very difficult to install within a few weeks. I think a lot of people are looking at, you know, for ourselves, have tried to understand how we can rapidly implement a treasury system. How quick are you? How fast is your shortest implementation? So we've just finished an implementation for a treasury and asset liability management or risk management system for a a uh, bank of about 800 million pounds of assets now in the UK. That took a total of two weeks on the ground and maybe a week, um, you know, of uh, work off site. So that was a really particularly uh, speedy implementation. It's unusual it, though. It, it is and it isn't. And part of the visual risk way is to think, you know, what can we embed within the system? How flexible is the system that you don't need a massive amount of configuration up front? So for a very small example, the system comes pre-populated with holidays for all currencies. Now, other systems might require you to load all of that data. So there's a considerable time saving in implementing a system like Visual Risk. One of the key differentiators to look for is the pre-configured dates and other data that are inside the system already. Correct, yep. I mean, we've had longer implementations where Clients have required some custom development. We try and respond to making sure that the system, you know, is 100% delivering exactly what they require. And if there's some custom development, that can take longer. But generally, our implementations are, let's say, between four to six weeks for, uh, you know, two or three of the modules that we deliver. Gary, in this aspect of differentiation where are you focusing on i mean i know you're head of professional services but where are you focusing your work on trying to differentiate visual risk i, I kind of take it uh, i look at it in a, a different way having worked with a lot of systems in the past um i kind of see i mean we talk about the speed of implementation is one of the differentiators i think the level of support is is a key factor um so the, the speed of product development is another factor that that's something that I think visual risk is very strong in terms of developing the product and moving forward. I mean, we, we, we regard ourselves as sort of hedge accounting risk experts and we have to keep, you know, keep ahead of the market. So there's, there's a big focus there. I mean, it's also, we're obviously, we're Australian systems, so we need to adapt to the UK market. So there's quite a focus in terms of product development to, to make sure that we, 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 we satisfy that need, particularly with the changing regulation. Hold on a minute. I thought the Treasury was the same worldwide. 
You mean there's a difference between the Australian market and the European market? Absolutely. <laughs> really? Uh, I mean, look, I, I don't want to disagree with Gary, of course. <laughs> we, we, we must keep the company line. Um, but there is and there isn't. You know, Treasury is international in a sense that everyone uh, manages interest rate risk. You know, even Australian companies, by virtue of, um, in a sense of isolation and limited capital markets, have had to have exposure to multiple currencies, they borrow in multiple currencies, FX is the, the same the world round. There are nuances in local um, requirements where different regulators are at different stages of implementation of global standards. So as an example, we're very good at hedge accounting and Australian auditors have had a lot more rigor in certain areas where it doesn't appear that some of the UK or European counterparts have had the same requirements. So if there's, let's say, slightly relaxed requirements, we do have to adapt our system to facilitate those local interpretations of some of the regulations, you know, whether it's um, hedge accounting, it's central reporting, uh, down to what the PRA are looking at for asset liability management. But generally, I would say that 95% of functionality is the same you know swaption is a swaption yet the other difference comes in we we're pretty strong on index link products so they each individual country has again small nuances in how they calculate their indexation factors and the different products available and that's i think where gary has alluded to where we've done a lot of work to make sure that whilst we've supported australian um inflation link products for a long time, we have customers running RPI link products. And so they have small variations in terms of how they accrue interest, how they compound, how their lag factors work. And we've um, adapted our system to make sure that we comply with those local nuances. Okay, so in, in essence then, what is visual risk, where do you fit in the scheme of TMS? So visual risk, you know, risk on compliance experts. So really, we're That's built true. around three different aspects. So we're, we're risk and compliance experts, and we bring a strong ability to manage derivatives and the procedures and functionality you need around that. So our focus is on analytic strength and complexity. Uh, okay. we, we also have a very, very broad set of functionality. So what we are finding is that whilst... Yeah, everybody, everybody says that. Well, it's, it is, you know, it's interesting. Everyone says it, but if you actually try and find one system that does advanced risk management, so, you know, we have some very large companies managing their jet fuel risk, managing billions of pounds of uh, borrowings and minimizing the cost, there's not many people that actually have true risk management functionality. Hedge accounting is a, is a big speciality of ours. And again, people can do very basic things. But when you look at, you know, IFRS 9 support, hedge accounting for options, full D designation, the very few systems that truly could be regarded as proficient in hedge accounting. You have the day-to-day -day treasury management, you know, the meat and potatoes, but daily the, operations. Your focus, and, your, your position is in the upper end of hedge accounting and risk assessment and management? I would say we have two key markets. We're a modular system, so we have very powerful risk and hedge accounting functionality for mid to large companies. You know, we do hedge accounting for banks. And, and the other? The, other? the second would be a full-scale end-to-end treasury system right, from risk management, the front office, hedge accounting, back office, cash management, liquidity, planning and forecasting. The final question I'd like to talk about is, what do you see the future development of the TMS market? What are the things that are going to happen in the next couple of years that treasurers should look out for that are coming treasury management systems? I think that treasurers should look at broader trends in technology and some of the features that they should hope that their vendors could hook onto. So some of those would be around performance, 
computing power and the ability to deliver insights and decision-making support, hold them as strategic partners for their organizations. Uh, aspects like big data and making sense of lots of information. The third would be true connectivity. I have a term that I call the, you know, you've got the internet of everything. I call it the treasury of everything. As we quit hooking up all sorts of different devices to the internet, similarly, we're hooking all sorts of different treasury ecosystem aspects. So everything from dealing portals, banking platforms, ERP systems, through to payments, confirmations, that world is shrinking. And I think that's going to be a big trend where the, the dream of straight through processing is fast becoming a reality. Well, thank you, guys. That's really interesting. Right. Well, really, thank you very much um, for your time.